Last year we lost in San Antonio. We all made a path among ourselves that we're gonna be back and that we're gonna you know, end things right this time. We've had that vision since the beginning of the year. I'm coming back, Max coming back, Talik's coming back, Rashad Denham, Hill, you know, everybody's coming back and we're so talented. We just always had that vision in our head. Over the course of the season, it just slowly started to materialize and we've seen how possible it was. We just went out there and grabbed it. I think to carry the mantle of expectations from September to April 5th was a remarkable, remarkable accomplishment for this basketball team. Conquest. The University of Connecticut wins the 2004 National Championship. For Coach Jim Calhoun and his University of Connecticut Huskies, winning the National Championship in San Antonio was sweet redemption. Just a year earlier, in the very same building, UConn exited from the NCAA tournament. But this time, the experienced Huskies dug deep, refused to lose, and after staging a remarkable comeback to beat Duke in a memorable semifinal, left the Alamo Dome as the team to be remembered. In the end, the final four belonged to Okafor, a mecca Okafor, the Huskies' team leader and the tournament's most outstanding player, as UConn conquered all and won the school's second national championship. For others, just playing in the tournament was excitement enough. Months of preparation and hard work finally paying off, leading to a trip to one of sports' great events. Let's do it. Let's Stop get the it talk. Let's, Let's do it. Let's get it done. Here we go. go. One, two, three, big, big boy. boy. This year's road to the Final Four was filled with elation, exhilaration, and accomplishment. But first, let's take a look back. Can. And it's over in Kansas City. 
the twelve has upset the five, Greg, again. Here we go. Oh, are you kidding me? Bring the house down. Get that out of here, says it back way. Long three. Oh, man. It's too easy. Nothing but Nelly with a kiss. So with the madness of March behind them, the four remaining teams headed into April and into the Alamo Dome to find out who would be the last to stand tall and wear the crown of national champion. Oklahoma State, representing the East Rutherford Regional, the second seed, the Oklahoma State Cowboys, for Coach Eddie Sutton, it's his third trip to the Final Four and a shot at his first national championship. In the opener against Eastern Washington, the Cowboys started slow but came up big in the second half en route to an easy 20-point win. In the second round, Oklahoma State jumped all over Memphis and never looked back, leading 41-19 at the half. Junior forward Joey Graham led a balanced attack as all five Cowboy starters scored in double figures. The orange and black then faced Pitt in the regional semifinal. In a tight physical battle, Tony Allen led the way with 23 as State used a 21-9 run to end the game and advance with a 63-51 victory. The Cowboys are one step away from San Antonio. 
In the regional final, the Cowboys saddled up against the number one seed, the St. Joseph's Hawks. John Lucas III scored 17 second half points, including the game winning three point shot with only seven seconds remaining. Three pointer, seven seconds left. As Oklahoma State advanced to the final four for the first time since 1995. Duke. Coming out of the Atlanta Regional, the lone number one seed to make it to the Lone Star State, the Blue Devils of Duke. In the first round against 16th seed Alabama State, Duke got 20 points from Shavlik Randolph, 19 more from Daniel Ewing, to soundly beat the Hornets 96-61. Seton Hall would also offer little resistance in round two. Led by the sharpshooting J.J. Redick. Credit from way outside. Duke pulled away with a convincing victory, 90-62, setting up the Devils' seventh straight trip to the Sweet 16. The action got much tougher in the regional semifinal against Illinois. Led by senior guard Chris Duhon's eight assists and ten rebounds, Coach K's Blue Devils held off the fight in the line eyes 72-62 and moved into the regional final. Up next for Duke were the Musketeers of Xavier. In a back and forth game, the Devils broke a tie late by scoring five unanswered points in a 66-63 win. Dang led the way with 19 as Duke returned to the Final Four for the 14th time, the 10th under head coach Mike Krzyzewski. Georgia Tech. Swarming out of the St. Louis Regional, making a second trip to the Final Four in school history, the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech. Carry on three. One, two, three, seven. In the first round, Tech eased past the pesky Panthers of Northern Iowa. After building a comfortable 17-point first-half lead, Yellow Jackets held on for a 65-60 win. Boston College was equally tough in round two. In a close game throughout, guard Jarrett Jack threw down a breakaway dunk with five seconds remaining that finally shot the Eagles down. Jarrett Jack! In the regional semifinal, Tech overcame an early injury to its leading scorer, B.J. Elder, and held off the hungry wolf pack of the University of Nevada. Marvin Lewis's 23 points and some tight defense down the stretch helped the Yellow Jackets to a 72-67 win. This kid is silky smooth. Tech's final roadblock to San Antonio, the Kansas Jayhawks. Led by Jarrett Jack, the Yellow Jackets controlled the pace of the regional final from the opening tip. But they would have to go into overtime before a huge three-point shot by Will Bynum. Bynum! Would send Georgia Tech under the direction of head coach Paul Hewitt to Tech's first Final Four since 1990. UConn. Out of the Phoenix Regional, the Connecticut Huskies, winners of four tournament games by an average of 18 points. In round one, the Huskies had too much bite for the Catamounts of Vermont. We knew we could beat them because he was real talented, and all we had to do was just keep working. Rashad Anderson led the way with six three-point shots at UConn's 70-53 to win. I really got in the zone early. Um, my teammates was finding me, and I just felt like I could miss. Three-point shot. DePaul then proved no match for the Huskies in the second round. In the first ever meeting between the schools, Connecticut ran off early with an overwhelming fast break. Crossover beautifully done. And eventually buried the Blue Demons with a relentless defense. We jumped on DePaul, probably put them away as well as we're putting away a team. We were able to get them early, get them often. It was more of the same from UConn in the regional semifinal. Led by Ben Gordon's 20 points and nine rebounds and Emeka Okafer's double-double. Didn't take him long to find the All-America. The Huskies dominated Vanderbilt in a 73-53 win. Energy once again came out, everybody was on fire. Everybody could just, you know, see that Final Four calling our name. In the regional final, UConn met up with the eighth seed, the Alabama Crimson Tide. 
And once again, the Huskies dominated inside, blocking seven shots. That's five blocks. And controlling the boards. Another strong rebound. Six three-point shots by Rashad Anderson. Anderson can't miss. <laughs> Just went down court, looked at, looking at him the whole way. Blow my hand. And 36 points from Ben Gordon. Gordon from long range. Helped shoot the Huskies into the final four for the second time under head coach Jim Calhoun. In the evening's first semifinal, Oklahoma State took on Georgia Tech. Good evening, everyone. Courtside at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. We welcome you to the 2004 NCAA Men's Final Four. Oklahoma State against Georgia Tech. A lot of hype. People say this is like the Super Bowl. Flash bulbs all over this Alamo Dome. Cowboys in their home white uniforms win the tip and have the ball going left to right to start the game. Right from the start, both teams came out playing aggressive, physical basketball, especially on the defensive end, contesting every shot and forcing numerous turnovers. Tech turns it over. With the hectic pace disrupting play, both teams struggled to settle into the game. Jim, we expected the game to be a little slower paced than this. Both teams off and running. But thanks to their seasoned head coach, Eddie Sutton, and three of their veteran players, the Cowboys found their composure and took an early lead. This strong rebound by Ivan McFarland. One dribble and a slam. Graham in the lane, short jumper good. And it's six to three in favor of Oklahoma State. Tony Allen, three point jumper, yes sir. Cowboys up by four. For Georgia Tech, senior guard Marvin Lewis took charge early, providing the bulk of the Yellow Jackets scoring on his way to 15 first half points. But here's Lewis, catch and shoot three, got it. After they had my first shot, you know, the guys saw that you know they had Lucas, John Lucas on me, and coaches said, Just try to get more shots. They said you can shoot over him all day. Lewis wide open for his fourth three of the night. Four out of five from behind the arc. He got us off to a great start offensively. It calmed a lot of our early jitters, you know, being in the Final Four for the first time. Lewis scored 12 of the Yellow Jackets' first 14, and his offensive barrage helped Georgia Tech ease into a one-point lead with 14 minutes left in the first half. For the next five minutes, the two teams traded baskets. Then, with a little more than eight minutes remaining in the half and the score tied at 22, Tech scored seven unanswered points. And it was hardly surprising who capped off the rally. Marvin Lewis, one more time, yes. Wow, wow he rattles it home for a fifth three-pointer. Georgia Tech's lead's grown to its largest in seven. 29-22 with 7.14 to play first half. As the clock wound down on the first half, Tech kept its lead. Thanks to Lewis, as well as sophomore guard Jarrett Jack and junior center Luke Schincher. While the Yellow Jackets' powerful threesome scored 30 of their team's 37 first half points, State looked to Joey Graham and Ivan McFarland to stay in the game. The Cowboy forwards combined for 17 points and 10 rebounds in the first half, but Georgia Tech still went into the break, holding a seven-point lead. With just 20 minutes standing between Georgia Tech and its first ever trip to a championship game, Coach Paul Hewitt asked his big man from Australia to lead the way. And in the half's opening minutes, Schincher didn't disappoint, scoring four quick points on his way to 19 with 12 rebounds for the game while remaining a dominating presence inside. With the Yellow Jackets now holding a double-digit lead, Oklahoma State tried to rally. 
But over the next six minutes, the Cowboys could only cut three points off of Tech's lead. Right corner, McFarland feeds a cutter. Weatherspoon layup, good. 51-43, the Tech lead back down to eight. 12-27 left to play. Finally, with a bit less than 11 minutes remaining, State would make it stand. With its season on the line, the Big 12 champs dug in defensively. Georgia Tech picking up their dribble. Oh, that was a bad play that time. Bynum. That's out of bounds on Bynum. On the offensive end, John Lucas came to life after scoring only two first half points and brought the Cowboys within striking distance. I keep wondering about Lucas. He's got Bynum on him. He's doing a pretty good job. Bynum took his eye off him looking for the screen. There it is. There it is, his first three. And his first field goal since 12-29 on the clock of the first half. Lucas starting to feel it. Yes. Yes. You gotta love the guy. John Lucas. Trailing by a single basket after Lucas's outburst, Oklahoma State kept the game close down the stretch. Throws it underneath to McFarland for the slam. Now boys just hanging around here. So. And as the clock wound down, it was deja vu all over again for Lucas and the Cowboys. With obvious nerves, here we go with the Cowboys. 36 seconds and counting. Lucas thought about it, but Shinsher was closing in. No chance. Well, here you go for the tie. That is yes again. It's John Lucas with the clutch three. He's amazing, isn't he? 26 seconds left, and they have gone all the way back. With its lead gone, Georgia Tech headed to its huddle, searching for the answer that would send the Jackets to the championship game. When Lucas' shot went in, the first thing I did was look at the clock. And I knew we had 26 seconds. When we were in the huddle, you know, coach told us we were going to win the game. I knew what I wanted to run, and I wanted to see where their head was. So I asked them what they wanted to run. And Marvin stepped up and said that I should have the ball. We just want to give him another opportunity to try to not necessarily have a mismatch, but just try to keep doing what was making us successful before. And he designed a screen and roll with me coming off, and he said, if I see a gap, take it. Ten seconds to go in the national semifinal. Final with Lucas defending. I saw a little gap, and I tried to take the stone. Five seconds. It's Bynum. Fakes outside. Drives in. Three seconds. Bynum. Oh, yes, with one yes. this time. Yeah. Lucas launches. It was like a dream. Words can describe how I felt after making the shot. The second semifinal game saw Connecticut battle Duke. Just a few days before his team's biggest game in years, a relaxed Jim Calhoun let his Huskies experience the beauty of San Antonio and the fun of the Final Four. Nice sunshine, good weather. I'm here with my teammates. Great time right now. Reporting live from CBS, this is Rashad Anderson of UConn. Um, got All-American guard Ben Gordon. Ben, just describe how, how your shooting has been on fire. Well, you know, um, I just have to attribute that to the, you know, the great passing ability of Rashad Anderson. <laughs> well, I hope we float like this on Saturday night. It should be great if we just float right along, no bumps, no waves, no nothing. That's what I'd love to have Saturday night. Duke's not going anyplace. I, saw, I thought that Xavier had him three or four times. I think we all watched that game, and, and, and you just can't put them away. you, you got to finally, once again, win the game, okay, they won't give you the game. We've had some tremendous, tremendous games. I think the similarities and the competitiveness of both teams, probably somehow or other, maybe through the uh, basketball gods, will these two teams to collide and neither team will give in. Saw these 
these two in a Final Four situation. It was for the big championship. It doesn't always come down to the end, but with Mike and I, it seems to, you know. <laughs> Leading the sole surviving number one seed into the Final Four, Duke's coach Mike Krzyzewski looked to avenge his team's three-point loss to UConn in the 1999 Final. But from the opening tip, the Huskies had a different idea. To the Huskies. Although the Blue Devils went down early, they stuck with their plan of attacking UConn inside. And that ball, hold on, that's going to be a foul, I believe, yeah. on Okafor. And just 46 seconds later, when Emeka Okafor, the key to the Huskies' dominating defense, picked up his second foul, UConn's coach, Jim Calhoun, was forced to make a difficult decision. Is that going to be Emeka? It is. Okafor can't believe it's his foul. Wow, that's the story here in the first four minutes. Two on Mecca Okafor. You know, as all coaches, we don't always agree with all those calls, but that really is not, that's irrelevant, quite frankly, because it happens. As I say, you're in, whatever situation you're in, you got to deal with that situation. So with 16.05 to go in the first half, Mecca Okafor goes to the sideline with two personal fouls. We sat him Mecca down, we let him fume for a few minutes, and he doesn't fume very many times, but he wanted so badly to be part of this championship. And here he is sitting on the bench four minutes into a game which is going to hopefully lead us to a national championship game. So look at the anger, the disappointment, despair. It was my first Final Four game. <laughs> now I'm on the sidelines cheering my teammate. I'm just <laughs> like, you know, clap. It, it, was, it was hard, you know, it, it was hard. With Okafor firmly planted on the bench, freshman Josh Boone and Charlie Villanueva help fill the gaping hole in the middle. Villanueva, he can make that shot. Three-point shot by the freshman. Yes, sir, he can make that shot. As the Huskies extended their early lead. Everybody on the team was going to have to, you know, step up and kind of, you know, fill the void that Amek was leaving. You know, I think especially, you know, me, Charlie Hilton, really realized that we were going to have to you know, try and pick up the slack a little bit. Look at Dylan the way and it's an 11-point UConn lead. And Mike Krzyzewski's going to go bigger. But the tide would soon turn, and Duke would eventually gain control inside. Thanks to its big men, Sheldon Williams and Shavlik Randolph, the Blue Devils came storming back. Slide. It comes in quickly, Dink right to the rack for the lay-in. Randolph with Barnes trying to hide him. Strong move by Chandler. Randolph for Duke's first lead of the night. Will Jim Calhoun come back with Okafer? Or is he going to say, no, as long as we can stay in this ball game, I'm saving him for the second half? Just to, to see them out there, um, you know, struggling a little bit and, and me being on the bench, not, not able to do anything. Ewing give up Randolph. I am out Calhoun. He does not like what he's seeing out there right now, and he hates to look at Okafor on that bench. I usually would not ever put anybody in unless we start losing touch. Um, for us, that's eight or nine points. When J.J. Redick hit his first three-point shot of the game with a little less than four minutes to play in the half, Duke had a 10-point lead, and Okafor was still seated on the bench. And I come over and I lied to him, blatantly lied. Mac, I'm thinking about putting you back in, just, just hanging there, buddy, without any intent. Not having a player like, you know, Mac and, you know, play, going against Duke, you know, you know, anything is liable to happen. You know, we could have went down by 15, 16 points, you know, really easily, but you know, our whole thing was just to, you know, hold the fort down until he got back in, you know, and I think we did a good job of that. Thanks to Ben Gordon, the Huskies were able to stay in the game, and soon Duke would run into foul trouble of its own. That could be number three on Chadwick Randolph. It is. With Randolph headed to the bench, Duke went back to Williams. But he, too, quickly picked up his third foul. 
and the Blue Devils headed into halftime, clinging to a seven-point lead. Knowing that Okafor would be looking to make up for lost time. Coach Calhoun just told me that, uh, Mecca, you know what? The second half's gonna be your half. You're meant to dominate it. Go out and do it. We're gonna see a Mecca Okafor come back on the floor, essentially a 20-minute game for him. Okay. We've got you fresh. You're starting just like everybody else. Their big guys all have three fouls. You've got two. He then said, we're not going to lose. But Duke had plans of its own. Led by their senior guard, Chris Duhon, the Blue Devils went on the offensive, using every opportunity to penetrate and crash the boards. A follow-up by Luol Dang put Duke up by 11 as the Devils continued their assault in the paint going right at the nation's leading shot blocker with hopes of sending him back to the bench. But the disciplined Okafor stayed in the game and made his presence felt as the Huskies chipped away at the Duke lead. To the Brown, Okafor snags it, dunks it. No difference when he's on the floor, and it might have say. Dang. Oh, what a block by Okafor. He wants it at the other end. Turnaround jumper. Yes! Down the line. Mecca Okafor coming on. And that's eight unanswered for the Huskies. Connecticut's celebration, however, was premature as Duke kept its composure and pulled away once again. Get that side kick. Screen up top. Duhon, he loves that move. Oh, yes. Calhoun says, I've seen enough. Timeout. Seven nothing run. Seven unanswered. I mean, he just really told you know how bad do you want this? You know, it's right in your, your reach. Um, do you want to let this opportunity slip away? And we all responded and saying, you know, we don't want to go home yet. When Rashad Anderson hit the first of his two clutch three-point shots down the stretch. UConn had cut the Duke lead to six. And when both Williams and Randolph fouled out of the game, Okafor was poised to lead UConn to a most improbable comeback. We're down eight points. We begged, pleaded, <laughs> did everything humanly possible to tell the kids simply, we need four or five stops. Well, the entire night, we were getting beat you know, off the dribble. We were getting beat on cuts. So we realized that if we wanted any chance to play for a national championship, we were going to have to step up on defense. And step it up they did, stopping Duke on six straight trips down the floor. Our kids who were playing good defense played it impeccable defense for uh, uh, the most important uh, four minutes probably of our season. One minute remaining up one. Duke has not hit a field goal in almost four minutes. Who will take this huge shot? Dang, over the top of the backboard, UConn ball. With 46 seconds remaining and UConn down by a single point, there was little doubt as to who would get the ball. Brown on the drive. Give up Okafor, shot for the lead. It rattled in and rattled out. And I saw Josh hit it. Tipped around by Boone. I'm like, oh no, I gotta get this. <laughs> I'll be danged if I take the last shot and miss it for us to lose the game. It's loose, grabbed by Okafor, and he lays it in. Okafor puts you kind of one, and Duke calls the timeout. It was one of the great will plays I've ever seen. It's a great strength play, too, but it was a great will play. He would not allow us to lose. After Rashad Anderson's free throw gave the Huskies a three-point lead, Duke had one last chance to avoid elimination. 11 seconds, they have no timeouts, needing the three to tie. Redick is the man to shoot it. He fires it short. Rebound, UConn, with three seconds to go. Well, up by three, I knew all I needed was one. And I'm like, dang, man, how many times have you, you know, imagine yourself in this situation, you daydream as a little kid, you know, with the fake basketball, no time on the clock. I mean, you look, I, I was laughing. That's why I was laughing. I'm like, yo, be careful what you wish for, because now I was in that position. So, you know, I took the first one. Clank. I'm like, oh, dang. <laughs> I looked up the clock. I three point two seconds. I got to make this one. I got to make this one. I just concentrated, concentrated.
For UConn, it was a remarkable comeback. For Emeka Okafor, it was an amazing performance. Scoring 18 points, grabbing six rebounds in 20 unforgettable minutes. I knew it was over, I'm like, yeah. Going to go play on Monday, dream still alive. And so in the national championship game, Georgia Tech squared off against UConn. After three grueling weeks and 63 games, after all the triumphs, the upsets, and the remarkable comebacks, just two teams remained, both with dreams of making their mark on college basketball history. As the Huskies and Yellow Jackets stood on the brink of greatness, Connecticut coach Jim Calhoun had a question for his team. Is this our moment? If it is our moment, are we going to grasp hold of it? What I want you to do is just concentrate just for a second on how you felt the other night, and how you felt the elation of what we had accomplished, what we had done. Anytime you get us. 40 minutes away from something as special as being the best team in the country. Situation, circumstance, fate only gives you so many moments. And are we going to reach out and grab it? As you start getting yourself warmed up, as you start thinking through the process, as we start going through Georgia Tech on the board, that feeling is 40 minutes away. Because this is it. It's two standing. At the end, somebody puts their finger up and says, hey, we're the best. And we are the best. But inside the locker room, Calhoun tempered his true feelings. Tonight, we're going to come out and we're going to run them off the floor because you're the best team in America. Before Calhoun could take his final steps toward a national championship, his anticipation and excitement would be enhanced after a meeting with a special member of the Connecticut basketball family. Coming out in that tunnel, that's his one last bit of sanity. And I caught him just that one second where I knew he was still kind of gathering his thoughts and getting ready to jump on this whirlwind. And to be able to shake his hand and then let him know that I was there. I get goosebumps as I walk out on the court and he fired me up even more. It gave him great comfort to know he had the support of his former players. Puts the ball up in the air, flash bulbs are flipping. In about two hours, one of these teams will hoist the national championship trophy. The Huskies got things going early as sophomore swingman Rashad Anderson, on his way to 18 points, continued the hot shooting that had helped propel UConn into the championship game. Gordon drives right, kick out Anderson, a three. Good. Huskies offensive rebound and gets him up 4 nothing. Just two minutes into the game, Emeka Okafor put UConn on his back. And Okafor with his first points. Then UConn continued to dictate the game's tempo. Huskies again pushing it up. Building on its early lead. It's Gordon looking for the jumper again. Yes! Quickly back hooks Tech, 9-4 UConn. After a slow start, Tech began to buzz back. Over the next three minutes, the Jackets played to their strength. First, showing range from the outside. Back the other way with Elder for three at the right. Got it, B.J. Elder. It's Tech to within two at nine to seven. Oh, buckle up, friends. We could be in for a dandy tonight, Randall. Oh, I'll tell you what, both teams slapping leather here like a couple of gunfighters. Then power in the paint. Ismail spinning through traffic, put it up. Would go, Schentzer follow, good. 11 to nine, Connecticut by two. And finally, speed and quickness on the defensive end. Okafor got knocked away. Out of there with it comes Bynum. Will crosses up Armstrong. Feeds Moore. Layup good. Tech leads. Clarence Moore with the slicing and dicing driving of Will Bynum makes it 12-11. Georgia Tech pushing tempo as well. This is Connecticut's game. An aggressive 8-2 run gave the Yellow Jackets a one-point lead with 13 and a half minutes remaining in the first half. It was Tech's first lead of the game, but it wouldn't last. 
early in the game, we just wanted to be very aggressive on defense, rebounding the ball. We knew that our offense would come. I mean, but still early, we've been there, we've done that. We're down eight to Duke with three and a half. This is nothing. For the Huskies, there was indeed nothing to worry about, as they once again took their game to another level. Looks right for Gordon, finds him outside the arc with 15, inside Okafor, baseline jumper is good. Six for the mighty Oak. Those early six points he had really set the tone down low, and let the other team know that it was gonna be a long night. And the Huskies back up 13-12 with 12.40 to go in the first half. On the run, the Huskies and Boone, yes. Boom. Gives UConn an 18-12 lead, biggest of the game. 11.35 to go in the half. Off to Lee. Right side, Gordon. Three. Holes. Three. Good! 21-12. Gordon with nine. They found out that when you get us in a fast break game, we're awfully good. This game is the way Connecticut wants to play. Moving it up and down the floor. Hitting from the outside. When you set this kind of tempo, you're playing right in their hands, even if you're successful early. Now 10 unanswered for UConn. UConn! 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 Led by the sharp shooting Ben Gordon, the Huskies' lightning quick two minute blitz extended their lead to 21 12, with a little more than 11 minutes to play in the half. Ben Gordon has just been Gordon tonight. Came out on fire the first half. Did what a champion does and helped his team get on top. I got rolling, knocked a couple shots down, and got my team going. Gordon put on quite a show. It's a championship game. You have to either stand up like a man and take what you want, or you're going to fall down. You know? And I just told myself from the beginning of the game, you know, I won't be denied. You know, I won't let my team lose whatever it takes. He's taken over this basketball team and, and showed the real true Ben Gordon, who's a very special basketball player. Just a minute later, Gordon, who scored 12 of Connecticut's first 24 points, drained his third three-point shot of the half on his way to 21 for the game. And when steady senior point guard Talik Brown scored two quick buckets in the middle of a seven to nothing spurt. Yukon's yes! lead held firm at 12 with nine minutes left in the half. I think I just put a lot of momentum in everybody else and they just fed off of me. Things were clicking. We felt the flow, we felt things going away and, we, and we're just going with it. Throughout the first half, the Huskies' dogged defense limited Georgia Tech to 29% shooting from the floor and held the Yellow Jackets, a normally potent and efficient team from beyond the three-point arc, to just two of 10 shooting. Four for 18, one for six behind the arc. You just get the feeling, but it could get ugly. Over the final eight minutes of the half, UConn played well on both ends of the court and was able to hold on to its double-digit lead. And just as the first half was ending, the Huskies closed it with a bang. Don't make it anyway. Can't do it. It's Anderson. Plenty of time. Two seconds. Step back. Three. Yes! That's a UConn. I told Mac, you know, look up when you get the rebound. If it comes out, I'm going to be open. I was at the clock, go fuss, and I saw the rebound, grab it. I saw Rashard, he already taken off. I just threw it. Rashard got it, took a couple of dribbles. Step back, shot it, left my hand. I knew it was in. That was a dagger right there. In the second half, we just wanted to twist it around a little bit. UConn goes to the locker room with their biggest lead of the game, 41-26. Before the dagger was twisted, Coach Calhoun led his Huskies into the locker room, where he delivered the season's final message. I said to them that no team has worked harder than you this season. I know that for a fact. This championship is yours. One, three, one, two, three. Huskies. Let's go, let's go. 20 minutes, y'all. 20 basketball minutes away. What can you give it? That really motivated us when we came out in the second half. Just going out there trying to destroy it. As the second half started, Calhoun's plan was set into motion. The final conquest 
for the national championship had begun. Leach sprints left into the front court, takes it all the way, passes to Okafor inside, he lays it in from the right. Okafor with 12, and the Huskies lead it, 43-26. Gordon drives right on Bynum, pulls up on the baseline, no good, rebound grab by Okafor inside, he lays it in. 50-29, Huskies by 21. 16.50 to go. Our job was to attack. Go at them. Georgia Tech in very serious trouble right now. Off to Gordon, he fakes, penetrates, cradles, runner, go! 54-31, biggest lead. We said attack them, really attack them. Talik looking to run, lob pass, Okafor running the floor, while layup, no good. Boone with a left-hand tap. Oh, Josh Boone. 56-31. Once we get that thing in the 20s, uh, you're not going to catch us. Huskies playing like champions here in the second half, and the game has gotten completely out of control for Georgia Tech. It was a devastating run. In a little less than six minutes, the Huskies had stretched their lead to an astounding 25 points, overwhelming the Yellow Jackets and putting the game out of reach. When we come out the second half, I thought we played like the team that was down 15. We weren't satisfied with that 15 point lead. It was key for us to get that lead up as much as possible. Denim Brown, looking down low, Okafor, pass in the lane. Josh Boone slam! 60 35 Husky. A 25 point Connecticut lead. We were just awfully, awfully good. Statement performance we're seeing right here by the Huskies. It's a reality. We're going to win a national championship because I knew in the back of my mind there's no way they're coming back. Cuts to the right, all the way in the lane. Left hand layup is no, and Okafor slams it home with one hand. Nine and a half, 19 for Houston Jr. Emeka Okafor. Just as he had done in the semifinal victory over Duke, Emeka Okafor dominated the second half. In the game's final 20 minutes, Emeka wrecked Tech with 14 points, eight rebounds, two block shots on his way to a 24-point, 15-rebound performance that earned him the honor of being named the tournament's most outstanding player. With his presence so large. He just put on a show tonight, whether it was blocking a shot, scoring a bucket. He did everything tonight. It's a big game. If I'm a supposed All-American, I have to show it. What better time to show it than now? The Mac is just absolutely was magnificent. Tonight, he was awfully special. After building an insurmountable lead, for UConn, the game's final 12 minutes became little more than a countdown to a championship. The clock won't go fast enough. You know you've won the game, but they just had to make my life a little more miserable. They were going to make me earn that, that championship. Georgia Tech did stage a valiant late comeback, connecting on four three-point shots in the final minute alone. But ultimately, its effort was too little too late. And as the clock counted down on another season, the Connecticut Huskies were the champions of college basketball. And that's going to do it. The game is over. UConn's the national champion for 2004. Here tonight, we dominated and showed we were the best team in America. The Huskies are the top dogs in April. UConn wins the national championship. 82 to 73, and UConn is the NCAA champion. The end of the championship game, get the ball and just throw it up in the stairs. I always wanted to do that. <laughs> so it, just, it felt real good to do that. I felt like it wasn't a real thought. Like, you know, I had to piss myself, make sure I wasn't dreaming. It's like surreal, you know. I can't even really believe that we just won, but I mean, it's, it's a great feeling. I wish I could share it with you because it really gives you an incredible appreciation for all the work and all the things that these kids have done and all the things that my assistants have done. And you just appreciate every single person who's really been part of this. For Coach Calhoun and his University of Connecticut Huskies, the confirmation was complete. With the second national title in six years, they had become one of college basketball's top programs. We always have aspired to try to be said in the same breath as Carolina, as Duke, as some of the great programs in America. Maybe this one kind of gives us another step up on, on that ladder that we'd be one of the, the teams in, in America. So when I was thinking of there, I felt tremendous for our program, our state, and certainly for our basketball team. To all the people back home who said I wasn't going to go to Connecticut and win a national championship, well, I won it. National champions, baby, stop! 64 came into the tournament. Just kept easing it down, 16, 8, 4, 
in a championship, and now we're the last team standing, so we're the best team in the country. A quest that began after a disappointing loss to Texas just one year ago ended with a final conquest in San Antonio. Congratulations to the top dogs of 2004, the Huskies of the University of Connecticut. champion now. Good I'm going. a national champion. You heard what he just said? <laughs> it's a beautiful thing, man. Fellow Huskies, bring the trophy back to stores. The championship was for y'all. This has been a Black Canyon production.